All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day, and I'm still feeling uh, just a little, little bit under the weather, but that's okay. We're not going to have a beer tasting uh, in this vlog, mostly because I really can't smell a lot of stuff right now. My senses are, uh, you know, uh, 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 messed up. I can't. Well, I don't know why I can't think of the word. My senses are all messed up, and I can't. I won't be able to to taste anything. And, I, and the beer that I have in the fridge that I really want to taste on the vlog is it's a really good. I have a feeling it's going to be a really good beer, and I want to savor it and 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 sensory it uh, completely. And I won't be able to do that. But what I do have is some nice hot tea. So cheers. Here's to all the sick people out there. Uh, drink some hot tea and you'll be uh, you'll be good as gold. Mm. Mm -hmm. Can't taste a thing. Uh, I think this is just a, a green tea. This is China Green Tips from Tazo Tea. Quite delicious. Quite one of my favorite teas. Mm. Mm. But that's good for the throat. That's good for the... For the spirit, so I apologize. There may be some snifflings, maybe some coughing, maybe some blowing of noses in this video again. Uh, something's going around. I've talked to a, a, an, an f ton of people uh, down here in the SoCal area, and it seems like everybody's sick. And evidently, I just I got sick somewhere along the way, and I've been sick twice this year, and it's weird because I don't usually really get sick that often but I'm here and I'm sick and we're moving forward with a vlog we're not gonna have any beer tasting let me get out my vlog notes um, yeah so this weekend I'm gonna be in VCC PA over in uh, Pittsburgh and uh, due to that event I won't have any review videos next week so there'll be no mech mod Monday topper Tuesday or wild card Wednesday but there will be a vlog next week so I'm gonna have a vlog now and then no more videos till the vlog next week and then hopefully we can get back on a little bit more of a normal uh, a normal schedule um, I, you know being under the weather and then traveling it just throws off my whole my whole schedule my whole my whole mojo my whole thing is all messed up. But I do have some very cool stuff to talk about. Um, I want to talk about Sony VTC batteries. I want to talk again about all the cartoony stuff. There was some really good uh, feedback from that as well as some new uh, information that has kind of come up or not. I, I guess I shouldn't be so cryptic. It's not new information. It's just kind of a new, a different uh, point of view on kind of the same subject. Uh, I did want to finally talk about the titanium wire uh there will be some shout outs there will be first impressions i'm going to try to get some viewer mail and there is one band that i think i could get away with playing on the vlog that i'm not sure hopefully youtube won't uh won't uh nip me for this one but we'll see it when we get there um i do not have a retro vaping uh segment prepared but what I do have is I was watching uh, YouTube. I, I like to get caught up on my YouTube subscriptions. I subscribe to a lot of people, and I like to get caught up on my YouTube subscriptions. And then I came to Mr. Vaping with Twisted. Vaping with Twisted 420 has returned. And he did like a tour of his vape room, and it was just a nightmare of a mess of death. And I'm thinking in my head, wow. That's really bad. <laughs> my vape room, my office has never looked like that ever. I just wouldn't allow that to happen. So what I'm going to do, Mr. Vaping with Twisted 420, is give you some tips as well as anybody who's watching this, viewers, some tips on how to keep things clean, organized, and in order, and how things work, at least for me here in the Grim Green Industries uh, vape layer office. So that's that's what we're going to do in place of retro vaping. But the first thing I want to talk about uh, is these Sony VTC batteries. So some people are saying this is really old. Some people are saying, oh no, this is brand new. Um, a website called PowerStream uh, I had never heard of them before. They published this article on May 26th, 2015. So it's fairly recent. This is fairly, fairly recent. This is uh, Sony's final word on production plans for the VTC4 and VTC5 batteries. Uh, they have a little disclaimer. PowerStream considers that all the text images on this web page are proprietary. Blah, 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 blah. So 
What they say, and I'll link to this in the description if you want to read it and not listen to me read it, our VP of sales spent a lot of time and energy trying to find someone at Sony that could tell us the status of the VTC4 and VTC5 batteries. He was successful, but the news is bad. Here is the copywritten response. Thank you so much for your inquiry, and this is coming right from Sony. Thank you so much for your inquiry. The 18650 VTC type batteries are no longer being manufactured by Sony. This product was never intended for individual public sale and are not eligible for warranty or engineering support. It was only available to OEM makers of specific devices. The specifications and markings of the battery may vary depending on the OEM's requirements. Therefore, it is difficult to determine the true manufacturer authenticity of the batteries without physical inspection and manufacturing code research. This type of battery seems to be widely available on the internet market through non-authorized resellers. Therefore, Sony is not liable for the performance or use of this type of battery for non-intended purposes. Such applications should be done at the user's own risk. Furthermore, any batteries of this type claimed to be Sony brand may be older stock. We apologize that we cannot offer further assistance with this matter. Sincerely, Sony. They go on to say, not Sony, the PowerStream website. It is very unfortunate that Sony would cancel the production of these cells uh, since they have been shown to be the highest performing, highest discharging cells ever made. However, they are a big company and have recently had an estimated $300 million recall due to safety concerns. This may be why they decided to close this production line since it is the most extreme battery they make. There you go. No Sony is not manufacturing Sony VTC4 and VTC5s, although they did say that there is a possibility that some of the Sony VTC4 and VTC5 batteries currently for sale are of the older stock. Me, personally, I just wouldn't... Uh, I just wouldn't risk it. I came to a point, uh, er, you know, towards the end of last year, towards the middle end of last year, where I just started assuming that every Sony VTC4 and VTC5 battery that I saw was a rewrap or a, or a counterfeit or something like that. I just stopped trusting them. Um, I had two, I had four uh, Sony VTC4 batteries, and uh, those were the last ones I ever bought, and I just... I gave up, you know what I mean? The market uh, got wonky and weird and there were counterfeits and rewraps and blah, 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 blah. And so I just started distrusting them. And unfortunately, that's what happens in the vaping world. Um, for me now, I buy uh, I buy MXJO batteries. Um, you buy, I buy these off of Amazon. MXJO 18650 batteries. Um, it says 35 amps, but... I'm assuming that that 35 amps is the uh, is the pulse uh, amp limit and not the continuous amp limit. I don't build super low with these, but in parallel, uh, they, they obviously you're going to get a lot more uh, amp. Uh, what am I trying to say? Higher amp limit on them. So I mean that's what I've been buying. I've been buying Sony or Sony MXJO uh, 18650 batteries off of Amazon.com because they're good batteries and I, I like them and I trust them. So yeah, there you go. No more Sony VTC5, VTC4 uh, batteries, which is, uh, which is a thing, which is ridiculous. Um, one more thing before I get to the cartoon stuff again. Just real quick, I'm going to touch on that. It's not going to be a huge long rant like last time. I want to talk about titanium wires so uh titanium is for vaping now people have been using titanium wires for vaping because uh, of the temperature control ability of pardon me some of these mods and i have i have in this a smoke tech titanium coil are you on and it works okay it's not amazing actually right now why are you not amazing Oh no, that's uh, that's nickel. This is titanium. What am I doing? No, these are both nickel. Okay, forget it. I had, I thought I had titanium somewhere, but anyway, titanium wires. You can buy the wire wire for for building. Um, and uh, who linked me to this? Derek, a guy. Derek sent me this website, stealthvape.co.uk. Uh, they don't sell titanium wires, but they have a very long long article about uh, 
the the possible uh, dangers of using titanium wire. Um, Stealth Vape is always on the hunt to bring vapors the best quality products and the next best thing in vaping technology. In 2012, we thought titanium wire could be one such product. Samples were sent out to our friends and colleagues, but we decided to pull it from sale prior to launch. It sounded awesome, uh, but languishing in a room in Stealth Vape Towers now lays 30,000 meters of never-to-be-used top-grade titanium wire. Rob made this decision because, in his words, it's probably broadening, it's probably bordering on irresponsibility to sell the stuff. The wire does produce a cleaner tasting vape than compared to some, some, something like Canthal, but when put, up, when put up against Canthal or tempered nickel, it's incredibly springy to work with. And then there are the flames. If it's overheated, either by dry burning or torching, it will burst into flames in a cool chemical fire kind of way, not dissimilar to magnesium. Titanium is a component of fireworks for the white sparks. Metal fires such as this require a class D fire extinguisher, not something commonly found in most vapors homes. Given this poses a huge safety aspect, which we could not be confident in selling it. We are certain that our insurers who already place a huge financial burden on suppliers to the vape market would refuse to cover us selling something we considered potentially dangerous. Although the insurance is not a legal requirement, it does not direct and does not direct what we sell. We feel there's a moral aspect that our customers uh, deserve. It's a long, uh, it's a long article, um, and it talks about a lot of stuff about uh, building with titanium, dangers with titanium. Uh, I think that's, uh, I think that's crazy. I didn't know that uh, titanium, if you dry burned it too much, uh, would burst into flames. And they describe it as a cool chemical fire kind of way and it requires a class d fire extinguisher to put out not something commonly found in most vaping homes personally after reading this article i kind of just went why why would i even bother with titanium wire uh it it doesn't it doesn't seem worth it uh in any capacity and they have a, a, a video at the bottom where they burn uh I don't know if it's them, but it is a video from YouTube uh, where they burn titanium. Um, simply put, Stealth Vape uh, says, just do not use titanium wire. Um, we won't sell it to you anyway. And yes, when they light this titanium on fire, it's a very large, like a uh, chemically looking awful uh, fire burn on there. And you know, there's some wires I've noticed uh, when I was using hot wires that if you over if you overburned your coils, they just melted and died. They just melted and died. No big deal. Um, I haven't run into that experience with Anarchist, but I've ran into that experience with Canthal. I'm assuming it, it happens with Anarchist wire as well. I mean, it's just, it's you know, it's a it's a it's a blend of wires. It's uh, what is Anarchist uh, nickel and uh, nickel and uh, Niachrome. It's a nickel niachrome blend. So I'm assuming if you dry burn it hard enough that yeah, it'll melt. Canthal does the same thing. But one thing that all those wires don't do is burst into uh, burst into flames. So don't. I mean, stop using uh, titanium wire. I just don't. I just don't feel like it's worth it at all in any capacity. So moving forward, um, one last thing. This is slightly advocacy related. Uh, Jay sent me this. Um, so a while back, uh, there was the Pink Lung Brigade, and they were fighting in Washington to fight off the 90% sales tax that the state of Washington was trying to impose on uh, on vape shops. Um, thankfully, that didn't go through, but they came back two months later with a 60% tax. Uh, same exact uh, law with just a lower tax rate. Now it's 60%. So that's what they're fighting up there now in Washington again is this 60%. They were in the clear for like two months, but this is one of those things uh, in advocacy that things don't go away completely once they're defeated. It's like, yeah, they they, they beat the 90% sales tax. Now the 60% sales tax, it, two months later, 60% sales tax pops up and that's ridiculous. This caused Mount Baker Vapor 
to have to relocate from Washington to Arizona. And if you're not familiar with Mount Baker Vapor, they are honestly one of the biggest uh, e-liquid manufacturers in the industry. Um, they specialize in large bottles for cheap prices. Um, and that's what they do and they do it very well. They had to relocate. They were in obviously Mount Baker. Mount Baker is in Washington. Mount Baker Vapor was based out of Washington State due to this uh, you know, legislative nonsense, the 60% tax, uh, they moved, they just up and moved. So now, congratulations, Washington State, you won't be getting tax dollars, you're forcing small businesses out of your state to relocate to other states. They're relocating to Arizona, and unfortunate as that is, obviously, Mount Baker Vapor, I wish you the best. I hope that you can uh, relocate and uh, you know, get back to business in, uh, in Arizona. So now is probably when we would do the uh, the beer tasting. But I have tea, and you can hear that my voice uh, isn't uh, quite up to par. I still feel a little congested, but I do have to get on an airplane tomorrow, and I do have to fly across country, and I do have to hang out with Sean from the Plumes of Hazard. It's gonna happen. It's just that's that's just gonna happen. So. Um, yeah, last week we talked about the uh, the cartoony labels and stuff like this and perception and marketing to kids and everybody chimed in and everybody had an opinion and obviously thank you so much for commenting and, and leaving your opinions. I do read all of them. And then someone else, uh, I think Mass brought this up on uh, the Plumes of Hazard this last week. Um, I'm going to link to it in the description. But there's a, a guy made a box mod out of a Crayola box. It's like a Crayola tin. I mean, it's a straight up Crayola tin that he modded into a box. Um, now, the person on the post said, is this okay with everybody? Like, is this okay with you guys? We're all against cartoony uh, labels, you know. We're all against possible perception of marketing to kids. What about this? What about a mod that is straight up a Crayola tin that's been modded into a into a box? Um the first response is probably the best response as it's the most upvoted response. Yes and no. I wouldn't use it in a public place just because of the douchey anti-vaping think of the children crowd. I guess that includes me. But at the same time, I think it's rad. Um, absolutely. Here's where I would draw the line on this. If there was a company selling this Crayola box, no, knock it off. Stop being an idiot. Stop being stupid. Obviously, that is a kid's thing it's a crayola box it's for kids if you're making it into a mod and selling it stop it but if there's a modder at home who grew up with crayolas and he loves crayolas for some reason and he's like crayola crazy and he wants to mod it into a mod to use uh in the privacy of his own home or something like that then sure go nuts i don't care what people do in, what people do in their own home is of no concern to me so if someone wants to make this and use it in their own home, and uh, that's that's fine. But I think as soon as you start selling it, then there might be an issue there. Um, alternatively, it came up that uh, you know there have been other things modded into vaping devices. Um, there is the, the talk boy. Uh, I know my good buddy Freeze from the TVA show podcast, he has a talk boy uh, that was modded into it. I have an NES controller that I absolutely fucking love that was uh, that was modded into a uh, into a device. Where do we stand on those? Here's where I stand on those. I don't think that the NES controller, and I'm not just saying this because I have one, uh, I don't think the NES controller is marketing to kids uh, in any capacity. Kids today don't know what an NES controller is. They just straight up don't know what it is. Uh, it's from the 80s. Anybody who grew up in the 80s is well above the 18 to 20 year old uh, range, which is legal for vaping. They know what an NES controller is, but no kids know what an NES controller is. It's like taking a really old, ancient toy from like the 1900s and modding and modding it and turning it and saying, oh, well, this is appealing to kids. It's like, no, kids now 
don't know what the fucking NES controller is. They don't even know what the NES system is. All they know is, you know, Xbox and Call of Duty and, uh, you know, I'm not hip, so I can't think of anything else. What is the one? What is the new video game coming out that everybody has a boner for? What is it? What is it? Someone tell me what it is. It's uh, it's not Call of Duty. It's something else. It's called something else. I can't remember. It was all over Reddit, and I I couldn't care less. I just don't play video games anymore. Kids don't know what that shit is. It'd be like uh, modding something. I don't know. I can't think of a of a good example because I'm an idiot. But the bottom line is that kids don't know what an NES controller is. I I don't use my NES controller when I'm out in public. I use it in my house. It's all good. I don't care. I don't really feel like that's marketing to kids. Uh, I just, you have to draw the line somewhere. And the talk boy is a perfect example. No kid knows what a fucking talk boy is. It was, it was featured in Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. You're telling me there's like a, you know, uh, 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 an eight-year-old or a ten-year-old that saw that movie and was like, I really want a talk boy? No, they saw that and went, what the hell is Kevin McAllister playing with? That thing looks stupid. I want to go play Modern Warfare. I want to go play Call of Duty. That's that's where it is. That's where I, uh, that's where I draw the line. Uh, obviously, let me know in the comments below what you think of things like this, of the Crayola box, of the Talkboy, of the NES controller. I'd like to get some feedback and and stuff like that. We're 20 minutes in. Um, I'm going to do one last thing uh, before we get to any first impressions. Uh, A fellow named Jay wrote to me and said, I thought I would pass this along. Ontario, Canada just passed a bill, C45, which categorizes vaping uh, in the same category as cigarettes. If you feel like reading the details on the bill, here it is. Uh, I'm going to post the link in the description. In fact, I'm going to do that just right now before I uh, before I forget. I'm going to post the link in the description to where you can read this. The long and short of it is you can't vape indoors and in any public place or workplace, including vape shops. Vape shops can't display, advertise, or discuss products, and vaporizers are considered a tobacco product, so any new laws pertaining to tobacco will also retroactively apply to vaping. Uh, the only thing that I actually agree with is this restriction for vaporizers to those 19 and over. Sure. Uh, we have lost the battle. I sincerely hope everybody steps up their game and realizes that this is a fight that can very easily go the wrong way. Keep up the great work, your reviews, and others may be the only way that I get to find out about new vape gear now. Uh, the uh, Vape shops can't display, advertise, or discuss products. Vape shops can't advertise or discuss products or display products. So if you own a vape shop uh, in Ontario, Canada, you just it's just an empty room and you go, yeah, we have vape stuff here. Well, can I see any of it? No. Can I try any of it? No. Then what what is the point of having a vape shop? These vape shops are going to close up if that if if this is true. Wow, that's that's horrible. Uh, obviously, Ontario, Canada. <laughs> You got uh, you got a long fight ahead of you. Hopefully, uh, hopefully something can be done about this. And like I said, I'll post a link in the description to the Legislative Assembly of Ontario, where you can read about Bill Forty Five, Making Healthier Choices Act. It's called the Making Healthier Choices Act. Going from smoking to vaping is making a healthier choice. You should be supporting this uh, anyway. So now that that's out of the way, I apologize. I didn't want to just glaze over that. Canada is serious. Talked about vape for youth, the VTC batteries, the uh, the Crayola, the Crayola box. Um, I also have another note in here that I'm not going to touch on till the future uh, because it's basically just uh, a hearsay. It's just a rumor right now. But I have a little note in my vlog notes. Um, someone sent me an anonymous tip. An anonymous note. And I'm not a journalist. I'm not an investigative person. I'm not an investigative journalist. Maybe I should fast maybe I should forward this on to Russ so he can look into it a little bit more. Um, someone sent me an anonymous note that is uh, was basically explaining that big tobacco companies are purchasing majority stock majority shareholder stock uh, in vape companies. Uh, these vape companies being vape companies that we 
know that we are very, very, very familiar with, that are very, very popular, uh, that I have personally sat with at Vape Meets and talked to. They have been at uh, all sorts of vape community events. Um, it's interesting. I don't know if it's true. Uh, I would like to, I mean, I would like to know if it's true. I would like to know if it's true without actually having to investigate it. But it turns out that I'm probably going to have to investigate this. Um, but someone sent me an anonymous email. Big Tobacco purchasing shareholder, majority shareholder stock in vaping companies. Um, vaping companies that we know. Hopefully, hopefully it's not true. Hopefully uh, we can touch on this in the future if it turns out to be true. I mean, that would kind of be a huge thing. Tea. Oh, green tea, I love you. So yeah, let's get through all that stuff. Um, before we show kind of my vape office, what I want to do first is some first impressions. So yeah, this isn't really a first impression. This is kind of a follow-up to my last and first impression. Uh, Joytech sent out some more of these Evic VTs. So I got one in black before... Mine was uh, the the sort of, uh, you know, yellow color, yellow, orange color. Now I have one in black with the black Ego One Mega tank. Uh, it's been working really, really well. Uh, re just, just spiffy, just stellar, just really, really well. I put a nickel coil head in here, filled it up with some 50-50 juice. Um, just because when I look at these coil heads, again, they, they have those really small juice flow holes. So I figured a 50-50 juice in there would probably work really well. This is uh, Boilermaker something or other. I don't remember. Working really, really well. Uh, the airflow on this Ego Mega 1 is loud. It's just loud. But that's not what I wanted to talk about. What I want to talk about is someone sent me an email. It says, uh, hey, Grim, when you hold your Evic VT up to your ear, do you hear a high-pitched ringing noise and clicking? And I went, no. <laughs> what? No, of course not. And then I grabbed my Evic VT, and I held it up to my ear. And I heard a high-pitched ringing sound and what sounds like a metronome going really, really fast. It's like... There's no way that this is going to... Let me move my pop filter. Can anybody hear this? No, 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 no. I didn't think so. I didn't think anybody could hear that. It does exist. I don't know what that is. And it's only... Let's see... Yeah, when you turn it off, it goes away. Like five clicks off, gone. Five clicks on, back. And it's a high-pitched ringing sound. Right out of the USB port. No idea. No idea what that is. I've never heard that before in a mod, uh, but it does. It makes that sound, and I'd love to know what the hell that sound is. Otherwise, it vapes great. Temperature control is working great. I have this set to 470 degrees, 60 watts, 0 0.12, uh, 0.21 ohm nickel coil head in here. Uh, it's great. Um, I have a feeling this is going to be one of my like uh, travel-y type of vapes. I may take this with me. I still don't know what I'm going to take with me to VCCPA. I've been sick. I haven't even had a chance to think about it. Um, but I may take this with me just for traveling. Can I stealth it? Yeah, I could probably stealth that. So yeah, that was just kind of an update to last uh, the last vlog. Um, first, first impression that I want to do is on this tugboat. The tugboat box mod. I got one in zombie green with the red splatter paint. Uh, the tugboat mod. It says toot life on one side, tug life on the other. So far, it's been fantastic. Now, this is not a Hammond box. This is a custom... I'm going to cough. <coughs> 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 
gross. This is a custom machined uh, box, and so far it's been uh, it's been rad. The internals are really nice and clean. I mean, they it's really tight tolerances as far as where this flat part drops off, and then there's magnets, and then you have the body of it, which is relatively uh, thin but feels very very durable. On the back door, there's four more magnets on there. There's these rails right here, which keep the door, I think is fantastic. It keeps the door from slipping. There's no play. There's a very little, li if you really press on it, there's a little bit of play back and forth. But when I'm holding it and vaping it, it's not even something I notice. I have to get in there like with your fingernail to kind of pop the door off. The magnets are nice and strong. Um, it's roughly the same size as a Hammond box. It's taller. This is the Titan. And this is, for my money, this is one of the best Hammond box mods in existence. It's taller. It's taller than the Hammond box. It's uh, exactly the same width as the Hammond box. Exactly the same width. It's just a little bit taller. I mean, exactly the same width. When I hold them like this, I can feel it. Tolerances are the same. It's just a little bit taller. Um, it does have this button. And I got so used to the Titan with this cool little clicky button. That going back to something this kind of big and rounded is kind of, yeah, it's like it feels cheap. It feels like a cheap button. It works great though. Uh, it's wired in parallel. So you're getting, you know, 3.7 volts. That is a MOSFET in there, parallel wired. Um, someone was asking me about the, 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 the sled in here. Um, there's some uh, mods like this with the sleds on the inside where the sled prongs love to just grab battery uh, wraps. Um, this one was doing that when I first got it. And I went in there with a screwdriver and I kind of like bent them. I pressed them up. So now when I pop a battery in, I can pull it out without it have without worrying about if it's gonna grab it. So just be aware that if you get any I mean any box with a sled like that, but especially the tugboat one, um, when you try to pull your batteries out of there, it could pull your could it likes to grab. It likes to grab the wraps on the batteries. So I just kind of use my thumb. I used a screwdriver. I just bent them back up a little bit. They still make a great connection. There's no battery rattle or anything like that, but now they won't uh, now they won't grab my battery tops. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have a blood spattered uh, tugboat, but I do have that anarchist cop cap comp cap that matches it. Um, this is how I've been rocking it. It's been fantastic. In fact, this is due to get rewicked. I think I might take this with me. It's great. I mean, I I love parallel boxes. Uh, it's one of those things where there's so many of them now that you kind of have to be nitpicky about them. Um, on the website, it looks like they have white, black, and ooh, shiny shininess. Um, wow, this see. So this is the Raptor chip version. Okay, this I have the unregulated version. Okay, so that makes a lot more sense now. This is on the website is the Raptor chip version, uh, 120 watt Raptor chip, adjustable wattage, and I'm assuming that's what this is for. They just took the same box and made it unregulated. That's why this is here. I was wondering why this little flawless nubbin is here. What is the point of this? I'm like, yeah, okay, it's branded, but it serves no purpose. It just goes on the inside and stops and connects to nothing. I'm like I would have liked it so much better if that wasn't there but they're using the same boxes. They're just taking out the Raptor chip and putting in a MOSFET and wiring it parallel to make it an unregulated box. The MOS or the, the Raptor chip version is 175. Why can't I find the unregulated version? Oh, the unregulated box, 130 bucks, 130 bucks. Comes in black, pink, Tiffany blue, and zombie. Uh, cool, 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 cool. Uh, and it comes with a uh, it comes with a little pouchy thing that I hate, but it comes with it. Zombie splatter. There you go. One hundred thirty bucks. Shit, that's a good deal. Uh, I think that's a good deal. I actually like. I, 
Say what you will. I really like the pink. I think the pink looks freaking cool. Uh, but whatever. Flitz. Flitz. Get a pink uh, Tug Life unregulated box mod. 130 bucks from Flawless Vape Shop. I'll post the link in the description. 130 bucks. Uh, if you don't have a parallel box mod, <laughs> 130 bucks will get you the Tug Life. And uh, I'm going to uh, obviously put this through at paces. As with all of my first impressions, I'll report back later in a video during my weekly review videos uh, with how this held up slash performed in the real world. Put it through its paces, so to speak. But so far, it's been really, really good. So, moving forward, here's this thing. This thing sucks. Okay, I'm not going to say it sucks right now because I haven't actually built on it yet. But, so far, I don't like it. I think it's dumb. This atomizer, well, I'm not going to put it on there. This atomizer comes from Watofo. W-O-T-O-F-O. This is the Addy Squared. And as you can see, it's a square atomizer. But it's round on the inside. This seems so pointless to me. And here's why. <laughs> I'm going to attach this. First of all, you can see that the edges of the squares stick out farther than the round circumference of the atomizer. So, when I'm screwing this down, the edges of those squares scrape against my mod. Scrape. Scrape against the mod. Scrape against the mod. And if you've used something like the Segeli 150 or a lot of these box mods, you'll notice that when you pull your atomizer off, there's a ring from your atomizer making that ring on there. These stick out farther than that, so they'll be scraping a bigger ring onto your box mods when you screw it down. They'll be scraping a wider ring that doesn't get covered up by the atomizer, that won't get covered up by any other atomizer. Additionally, screw this on here. There's the deck. You have a square center post, square side posts. It looks like one and a half millimeter holes in the posts there for building. Like I said, I haven't built on it. Then there's this airflow situation. So this is square-ish. And there's airflow holes on that side. And there's airflow holes on that side. So this is screwed on here, snugly, to the point where it's that's where it's going to live. If I want to line up my airflow to the coils that I built, I'm going to pop this on there like that. Perfect. And then that's how it sits on your box mod. If you want it to sit square on your box mod and look cool, like a cool square atomizer on top of your square box mod, your airflow holes are not going to line up for shit with anything. So, especially if you want, oh man, if you want to build like a center post build on here, forget about it. You're going you're gonna to be all fucked up. And then you put your adjustable airflow. It's got step down airflow, internal airflow adjustment, which is, you know, fine, I guess. Just like that, that's how it's going to sit on there. It's going to be off-center. It's not going to look square and cool on a square box. It's going to look square and off-center and like diamond-shaped across the top of your box mod. Every box mod I've tried. In fact, one of my favorite of all time box mods, those my boxes, it doesn't even screw down onto there um, because the my box has a very, very slightly recessed 22 millimeter atomizer. Uh, connection it doesn't even screw down on there I'm gonna try to put this on the Titan let's see if it screws down onto the Titan any better than it screws down onto the tugboat no it's not gonna do it either yep that's how it's gonna sit on the Titan as well all off-center not squared off and cool like this like they intended it to be like that looks square off and cool it's gonna sit. Uh, it's gonna sit all fucky like that. So what I'm gonna do, not right now, but probably today, is I'm just gonna build on this. Uh, I just want to see. I just want to see how it vapes. If it vapes great, then maybe I could get around the wonky, weird squared off design. But as it stands, it doesn't sit squared off on freaking anything so far. It only. It sits all stupid and weird. Um, I'm gonna set that aside. That atomizer needs to get cleaned. 
I'm gonna put this back on here. I think this is the setup right here that I'm gonna take with me. Um, I'm gonna be hanging out with Sean and Matt, and I don't have any like high horse, expensive high end mods or anything like that. Like I don't have a Zero or an Uber Toot or the super expensive things that they use. So I'm gonna be bringing my Titan, my Titan with the twisted messes. Plus it's blue, blue, and blue, and I think that just uh, I think that just looks cool. Delicious, delicious. Um, two more things to talk about real quick. Um, this thing. This thing is freaking amazing. Uh, this came in to me from eLeaf. This is called the I Just 2. I Just 2. You Just 2. I Just 2. And this is part of that. Uh, there's sort of this new thing happening. Uh, the Matrix is doing it. Uh, Joytech's doing it. Now eLeaf is doing it. It's a proprietary battery. Not proprietary. It's got a 510 on there. But it's a single volt battery, similar to like an 18650 mech mod, and it comes with its own tank, and the tank fits onto the battery, and it's designed to be like a complete unit thing. Now this tank, I haven't figured out how to get it completely apart for cleaning, but it does use its own e-leaf coil heads in there. And I literally, like I just got this, uh, filled it up about five days ago, so I haven't got a chance to see if any other coil heads fit in there, but it looks like maybe the Atlantis coil heads could fit in there. Maybe the Star coil heads could fit in there. Um, I can't see that this tank comes apart in any capacity, but I'm gonna fiddle with it. I said the Arctic didn't come apart and it did. Um, works like a sub ohm tank. You fill it up, you prep your coil head, you screw it all together. The airflow on it is great and the performance that I'm getting from this little coil head is fan freaking tastic just fantastic the flavor is wonderful the airflow is wonderful and i'm not getting any like spit back in my mouth from this tank and it's great uh it's you know what let's just look at the website here the i just two there you go i'll link to it in the description of course like on any other vape websites eleaf really taking a page out of the uh, apple playbook here with their website 2600 milliamp hour or ma large capacity battery despite its exquisite appearance and lightweight 5.5 mil tank uh, and it uses a new ec coil head makes larger cloud production <laughs> What more, the special structure design for iJust2 Atomizer standard base improves the heat dissipation capacity to a large extent. Uh, and they have a exploded view of it. There's the air co flow control ring, the atomizer base, your battery, how it all fits together. Why is this leaking a little bit? I thought it was going to leak. I put, uh, I saw a drip come out when I screwed it back together from the coil head. I saw it drip down the side. No big deal, it's not leaking. Uh, yeah, so it's got a 2600 ma milliamp hour battery. It's 22 millimeters around, which means, and this is a 0.2 ohm coil head. So I could theoretically throw this Twisted Messes RDA on here. And it should fire. It should work just great. Let's put the Twisted Messes out of battery on here. Ah, oh, plus that looks cool. Okay, not quite. I'm guessing this does not have a spring-loaded 510. No, it's not going to work. This Twisted Mess is RDA. Why did I even think that would work? It's way too low. That is way too low. That's not even 0.2. It's like 0.12. Let's try Tugboat. What up, Tugboat? What up, Tugboat? Yeah, Tugboat. Tugboat totally works on there. Nice and powerful. Holy crap. That just impressed the hell out of me. It doesn't screw down all the way. There's a gap. There's a little bit of a gap there. Do you see that gap? But that was intense. That was a very, it felt very, very strong. Holy shit, that's amazing. This little E-Leaf battery is kicking some ass. That is amazing. So I could put this tank as well on this tugboat and have, you know, basically the same uh, same experience. Or not. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting as well. 
Why aren't you working? Why don't you fire on there? I love troubleshooting. I love troubleshooting vaping instead of actually vaping. Huh. I don't know why that's not firing on there. It seems like it should be firing on there. Huh. Huh. I'm confused. I am confused. Well, interesting. Uh, I'm going to look at this 510 connection and see if it's actually spring-loaded or anything. It is. It is spring-loaded to a certain extent, but it's a very, very stiff spring. But this, this is what's important. This works on here. This is how it's designed to be used. It's not, you know, putting another atomizer on here, that's just a bonus. This is how it's designed to be used, and thankfully, together, they work really, really well. Uh, this is a 70% VG juice. This is Brewwell Brew 123, I think. Uh, one of my favorites. Brew 123. One of my favorites from Brewwell. Support Brewwell. They're great. The vape that I'm getting from it is just uh, just unbelievable. This is one of the best things that I've come across uh, ever in the history of time. Uh, pure organic cotton wicks in their uh, heads. Compact PCB board applied in iJust2 battery, which largely saves space and therefore shortens the length of the battery. Uh, you fill it up. You do it. Uh, it take, says it takes three hours to charge via a little USB right there. It does not make the sound it does not click and make a high-pitched humming sound but holy crap this thing is amazing uh, I'll be really interested to see the price on this um, I don't know of anybody selling this right now but I'll do some Google foo or you can do some Google foo and see who's selling it uh, this if they if they sell this for under a hundred bucks if they sold this for like I don't know 80 bucks maybe 70 bucks uh, it would go crazy. Oh, there's already people who have reviews for it. Oh, Vapor Trail. I like Vapor Trail. Sweet Vapes is selling just the tank. Uh, the Vaping Forum. I don't know. I don't know how much this is going to cost, but I'll post a link in the description to the uh, eLeaf website where you can check it out. I think this is fucking amazing. And again, like all my first impressions, I will report back later during my weekly review series on how it performs and holds up in the real world with day-to-day -day use. But right now, I am a huge, huge fan of this. Good fucking God, the quality of the vape on that is just blowing me away right now. So, uh, moving on to the very, very last first impression. Now, I don't know if I'm going to do a review for this either. I, I have the dual 26650. I got the little 18350. I have the dual 18650 version, but this... This is another My Vapes My Box. I can't help it. I am a fan of My Vapes and I'm a fan of their My Boxes. I just like using them. I ran the Dual 18650 version for what seems like an eternity. I just loved it. Have the currently have the Dual 26650 version just knocking my socks off. So what they did now is a triple 18650 unregulated MOSFET mod. Uh, and it's got that signature like snap-on magnetic door that always, oh man, that just works so well. Just like that, and it almost, like it almost becomes seamless. Like, you can kind of see right there, that's where the door is, but it's just, it's so nice. There's a little rut right here where you can get your finger and pop the door off, rock your triple 18650s in there, pop the door back on, MOSFET protected switch. It's got that, uh, you know, spring-loaded 510 connection. Oops. Hi. And here's what I was talking about earlier. You see how it's slightly recessed in there? Very slightly recessed. So that squared-off atomizer is certainly not going to work on there. No matter. I've been rocking it with this EVE atomizer. Uh, let me make sure that this is dripped with some top-secret juice. Do, 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 do. I think this is going to become a cult juice. The one I'm vaping right now may become a cult juice. As in uh, the Grim Cult juice, rocking and rolling. It's been uh, it's been fan freaking tastic. <sighs> yes, it was already juiced, and I just got juice in my mouth. That was a terrible, terrible feeling. I hate that. I've always hated that. Very, very juiced. Very, very wet. But triple eighteen six fifty. Now I don't know what this does. It's a triple parallel 18650. I'm assuming that much like a parallel double 
18650, you're gonna be splitting your amp limit over the two batteries. You're gonna be splitting your amp limit over three batteries here. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. I'm not a modder, I'm, I'm not an electrician, but theory says, I mean, following the same you know, train of thought for the double 18650 parallel box mods, like the Titan or the My Box or the Tugboat, you're splitting your amp load over the two batteries. Are you splitting your amp load over the three batteries? Feedback is always welcome. Let me know in the comments below. I think that is correct. I think you're splitting your amp load over three 18650 batteries. Um, it's just great. You know what? I might just double up and do this and the 26650 version uh, in the same video. I might do all three. I might do the little 18350 version, the 26650 version, and then the triple 18650 version all in the same video. Just sort of a my box extravaganza. I think this is great. Um, this one happens to be all green. Uh, and I. I'm not gonna complain uh, about the color of it because I didn't pick out the color of it. They just, you know, made it all green. It'd be cool maybe to have like one green side and one black side or two green sides and then black all down the middle. That would be very cool. That might be very cool as well. But you know what? There's multiple color combinations you can get. In fact, I don't live in blue and green or, or in black and green. I like blues I love that yellow color if I could get like black and blue that might be cool too but no matter they do come uh, in a rainbow of freaking colors and I'm going to post uh, in a, a link in the description to their uh, to their Facebook page where you can see all of their nonsense stuff like that it's very very cool stuff so that's the last first impression that I have so what I'm gonna do now God someone remind me not to drip on that again I keep dripping on it and I just keep getting juice in my mouth. Let me have another toot on this. Oh. oh, God, that's a beautiful vape. Beautiful vape. So uh, this is already running long. We're already well over 45 minutes into this video. What I want to do now, getting texted, uh, I want to grab my little GoPro, and we're going to show you around the room real fast. Oh, shit. It's okay, so I'm sorry. Before we get to that... I do need to do some shout outs. I completely, completely skipped. I completely skipped all of my shout outs. It is shout out time. And there are shout outs to do. And I just, uh, da, I didn't, I just straight up did not, uh, did not get to them. So let's get, let's, I gotta get over to my email real fast. And I do have some shout outs. I promised people some shout outs in this vlog. So they will, oh, they will, they will be getting shouted out. Um, where is this guy? Michael, Michael, uh, Michael says, uh, I don't, uh, I don't remember sent, uh, e Ugh, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't remember sent an email about if I can put a tank on a mech mod. Well, the reason I'm writing you is because my dad has fallen in love with vaping. He loves your vids and he asked me to email you because he wants to know if there is a, any better or faster way to wrap coils my father has parkinson's disease i understand my father has parkinson's disease as well and it's hard on his life but he has a great family and friends backing him up if there's any way you can fit this into your vlog it would really make his day me and my dad never miss your vlogs uh we always have a beer on hand and a vape in the other if you could shout out my father for serving his country as a ranger that would be very very cool congratulations you didn't give me your father's name but michael's father for your service as a ranger, absolutely consider yourself shouted out. And there is a coil building jig out there. And I sent this link to Michael previously, and I'll post it in a link to this video as well from Curio Concepts. It's like a little tube with a hole and then a wire thing, and you 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 twist it, you wrap your coils, and it it just makes life easier if you're not. If you've never wrapped coils before and you don't know what you're doing, I sent one to my brother. He really likes it. It's the Curio Concepts Coil Winder, and I'll post the link in the description to where you can check that out. But Michael and your dad, consider yourselves shouted out, and uh, yes, there is an easier way to uh, to wrap coils up there. Oh, okay. This is, comes from Thomas. He says, I, I don't normally email because your videos normally answer the questions before I ask, but I do have one request. This past Wednesday, June 3rd, I got married after four years to the girl of my dreams. She's absolutely perfect, and I'm the luckiest man alive. I was curious if you could give her a shout-out for me in one of your vlogs. Absolutely, I will. 
Uh, in the summer of 2013, Tori, my wife, uh, mom, Kelly, found out she had to undergo quadruple bypass surgery. Tori's mom was a smoker for 20 years, and this had to be one of the results of that, and she knew it. Uh, after my grandfather passed away three years prior, I knew it was time to stop smoking. October 13th, 2000, October 2013, I stopped smoking, not only for my mother-in-law and for my grandpa, but for Tori above all. Sorry to take up so much of your time, but I would see, be so appreciative of this. Tori literally saved my life, and I will always call her my saving grace. Absolutely, Thomas Tori, consider yourself shouted out. Thomas, keep up the good work. Uh, it's an incredibly satisfying feeling, absolutely. Moving away from cigarettes, um, not only doing it for yourself, but you know, doing it for the people that you love. Um, so yes, you and Tori, consider yourselves uh, absolutely, absolutely shout it out and keep up the get, keep up the good work. Um, uh, this is uh, this last one, uh, maybe not the last one. Jonathan writes to me and says, "Hi Nick, my name is Jonathan from Oklahoma. I've been watching you for a while now. Your videos always entertain and inform. Um, thank you for all you do." Attached is a picture of my son Jonas, who was born yesterday, and he's a fighter. There were some complications during label, labor, and an emergency C-section had to be performed on my insanely brave wife. Both had a rough time, but both are recovering well. I'm sitting here in the recovery room watching your latest vlog, and I was inspired to write new. Write you right now. I'm counting my blessings. Currently thinking about how you've helped me and my wife quit smoking and stay off cigarettes, even when our pro tanks tasted burnt. Lol. <laughs> Now my son will never have to deal with second or third hand smoke and both of his parents will live longer and healthier lives. Props on your new Cali digs and your successful e-liquid. Uh, I'm not fishing for a shout out. I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, and I warned him and I said, you may not have been fishing for a shout out, but a shout out you will receive. Shout out to you and your wife uh, and your new boy, Jonas. Uh, I, he, I, you know, kids are, uh, uh, I love the idea of kids. I, I never want to have kids, but I'm excited when other people are excited about their kids. Um, I think that's fantastic. Yes, I love the idea of, you know, procreating the human race. I'm never going to have kids, so I live vicariously through people who who have experienced that uh you know that sort of miracle of life jonas uh looks awesome uh, i wish you guys nothing but happy and healthy lives for you and your wife and your son i think that's uh i think that's fantastic thank you so much uh jonathan for the kind words one last one spencer spencer writes to me and says hey nick my name is spencer and i work in a vape shop in denton texas called bombay vapor we have been open for a little over a year, and we are very excited about growing popularity in our town. I was wondering if in our next vlog you could shout my boss out. His name is Chaz. Chaz. Uh, and he's only 21 years old and running a successful brick and mortar as well as the co-owner of a juice company. He works really hard to give as much knowledge as he can to each customer and has helped me a lot with vaping and with my job. But if you can shout him out, he would love it. That would be awesome. Absolutely. I've never shouted anyone out named Chaz. So Chaz and Spencer over there at Bombay Vapor in Texas, in Denton, Texas. Absolutely. Consider yourself shouted out. Keep up the good work. Keep up the good customer service. Remember that running a vape shop is all about the customers, uh, not about uh, running like a social club. It's, it's all about the customers. It's all about helping them have the best vape experience that they possibly can because I believe everybody should have the best vape experience that they possibly can. Um, I apologize. One more. Uh, this, you know what? I'm going to have to put this into the... Uh, this one's gonna have to go into the into the next one. This one's gonna have to go into the next vlog. I apologize. This is running way too long, and I before we get to anything else, I do uh, in in spite in lieu of retro vaping, I do I do want to show you how to keep your stuff organized. So I got my GoPro camera. We're gonna turn it on, and uh, we're gonna go uh, we're gonna go around the office area. Skip around the room. Skip around the room. We're gonna go around the office area. Yeah, what's up? What up, GoPro? What up going on over here? Uh, I guess I can show you my desk first. Uh, this is what a vlog looks like. There's just shit everywhere. This is my tea. This is my phone and stuff. That's some VaporCon stuff. Shout out to Cheeksy Vapes for the uh, for the Stormtrooper bobblehead. I think it's just so fun and fantastic. Let's go over to the closet. Oh yeah. I hope you don't mind if I uh, sit down while we do this, at least for this part right here. 
This is my closet. It's packed full of, uh, well, basically everything that I own. Christmas decorations in here, guitars, tubs of stuff, yearbooks, nonsense like that. But I have this one special area that is just for all my vape stuff and rotating vape stuff in and out. Now, vaping with Twisted 420. Go to Target or go to Walmart and invest in one of these. It's gonna be the best thing that you ever have. Uh, and, uh, and you can cover it in cool stickers too. Look at that, I got Local Vape, Sub Ohms, Smoke is Dead, Vigilante. The bottom is all shipping stuff. It's all stuff uh, that I ship for, for giveaways. I keep all my wrappings and stuff in here. There's some electrical cords, but for the most part, it's all stuff that I use for shipping. Uh, the next one down, so this is the retirement area. And I don't know, I have some star tanks in here. I guess there's some, some giveaway stuff in here. I got some Magnus tanks. This is the Tesla Metal 60 Watt. Gonna do a giveaway for that as well. But this is where retired uh, tanks and stuff go. Uh, I hope you can see this. There's some retired stuff in here. Doge, Freak Show, this horrible atomizer. This alien atomizer, never buy this atomizer. It's terrible. Uh, I didn't even put it on video. But there's some uh, some sub tanks in here. That soft vape tank. Uh, there's some sort of giant K-Fun cap uh, that I used to use. Uh, the sub tank, the Aspires. That's where retired tanks and atomizers go. As well as retired other things and boxes. And sometimes I have to keep boxes like the sub tank stuff comes with a bunch of extra things that you kind of need to keep track of. So it's easier to just keep that all in the box and then put it in a drawer like this. The next one up, I'm gonna have to, uh, oh, I'm gonna have to get on my hands and knees here. Next one up, this is all stuff that I'm currently using. So things like this, the iJust 2 box. It comes with a bunch of extra spare parts and stuff like that. And the best place to keep that is in the box and in a drawer. So this is all stuff that I'm currently using. My IPv4 box is in here, but it's empty. Silver Play version 2 box is in here, but it's empty. The Evic VT box is in here, but it's mostly empty. My Twisted Messes RDA box is in here, but it's empty. The Squape RS box is in here, but it's mostly empty. Once things get a video, I decide if it's going to go on my shelf or it's going to get given away. If it gets given away, my product goes back into this box and then goes into the other drawer waiting to be given away. There's a system here, Twisted Messes, or Twisted Messes, vaping with Twisted 420. There's a system. This is the box for the Watofo Addy 3. Chances are I'm going to review that Addy. I'm going to dislike it. I'm going to put it in a box and I'm going to give it away. I have the box for the Arctic Dolphin in here as well. When I'm done with it, it's going to get put back in this box and it's either going to get given away or it's going to go on my shelf and then that box gets thrown away to be replaced by another box with a future product. Is this all starting to make sense right now? Uh, the middle one is kind of just junk stuff. There's some Goo Gone monitor wipes, nothing important in that one. And then the top one, again, is all, uh, is more giveaway stuff. It's an Anakin eye sub. That's going to get given away. See, remember I was talking about the Matrix high voltage batteries? Got a couple of those to give away. Got some clippers to give away, courtesy of uh, my uh, Yud. Got an MVP version 3 in there. Got the giant Aspire Atlantis. All this stuff is going to get given away. Atomizer, uh, a Bam Bam, some more Star Tanks, an Ego 1 kit, which I have plentiful. This is the... Uh, this is a Tendu mech mod that I'm going to be giving away. A um, lot of stuff to give away. That's what that drawer is for. This is a mech mod. That's a Ragnarok in there, mech mod. Right? And then, okay, these are my business cards. And then I have my tackle box. And this is like the history of vaping in here. All cardamizer tanks, tanks I don't use anymore. I mean, there's really old, like, EVODs and nonsense in here. Some really old juice. Can you imagine how old this juice is? I think this is from 2009. I should vape it. Tackle box is full of really old stuff. Really old bottles. E-Liquid Planet from their E-Liquid Lab. Uh, remember this? I did a review on this like two years ago. That was for with uh, Pro Tank coils. Retired stuff. All 
all retired stuff. Uh, what's this? The Mutation X version one. This is my old tech mod, which uh, yes, that is going to be in retro vaping soon. And then more uh, retired stuff. Blister packs of pre-filled cardamizers. Uh, a saddle valve for punching cardamizers. An old, old e-pipe that has never ever worked. This is how you keep stuff organized. The tackle box is full of stuff. I got a dot mod Petri atomizer here that I'm gonna be giving away as well. And then above that, these are china boxes. These are these star tanks. Look how many there are in here. These are all gonna get given away. One, two, three, four, five, so 10, 15 star tanks. Those are all gonna be given away. All gonna be given away. In fact, I might give those away at VaporCon West. Some more stuff from Smoke Tech that's gonna be given away. BTCs, look at this, a bunch of stuff from Watofo. These are just caps for the Freak Show minis. Um, this is some top secret juice in here that you can't uh, that you can't see, but that's uh, top secret juice in there. So yeah, closet, vaping with Twisted 420, just invest in one of these. It's the best thing you'll ever invest in. So moving on to the book, <laughs> where did that come from? The bookcase. Um, this is where things get retired to. Um, this is stuff that I either really, really like or is very, very sentimental. Very, very sentimental to me and it will get put on the shelf. So you can see starting back here, this goes all the way back to, you know, 2009. This is the Cisco laser pointer mod. I have my screwdriver up here. The, I mean, just, if you can guess how many, you know, guess the names of some of these mods. Um, it's the Helix back there, some Omegas, the Silver Bullet, my old, uh, look at that, the old Opus D sitting there. And sometimes I go through and I vape these. There's some mech mods. There's the Solara from uh, Beyond Vape. I have two shelves, basically, that I have dedicated to just stuff I'm going to uh, to keep around for a while. It's that Sick Clouds, the box mod. They have upgraded the uh, the sled in it. Two shelves of that. There's, there's some stuff over here and this stuff gets pulled off regularly to be used. That's kind of what the second shelf is for. The second shelf is for stuff that I want to use. You know, it can't take up any space anywhere else so it goes over here, like this vapor flask. I fucking love this thing and I use it all the time, but when it's not getting used, yeah, it's gonna go here. Chump mods, love this thing, use it all the time, but when it's not getting used, goes over here. Got my NES mod. Love this thing, use it all the time, but when I'm not using it, again, it goes over here. Segeli 150s, the, uh, you know, the Ambassador 26650 mech mod, this thing is great, but when it's again, not getting used, again, it just goes over here. So I have this whole shelf of things, and this is constantly getting rearranged and cleaned and dusted, and no offense to people when they wanna send me juice, I can't possibly accept any more juice at the moment, okay? I'm gonna show you why. I have at least a bajazillion bottles of, uh, of juice at the moment. And this is all from this year. There's a bunch of, I have some Lane Cove stuff. This is all stuff that I've got at, uh, at Vape Meats, ISM, Philip Rock. That one's actually pretty old. I've got a bunch of the Namber Juice Epicloud stuff over here. Pineapple Cake, Glacier Banana, Cardamator Crush. Got some stuff from Dragon Mouth, Pale Whale. They, I don't even know what this is. Unlabeled big bottle of juice. I have it. Got other big bottles of juice. Never even tried this, never even opened it. Nephology, no idea. People love sending me juice, and no matter how much I kick and fight, people still send me juice. And some of the stuff I really, really like, look at that, Life of Pi. It's almost gone, because I vaped so much of it. Additionally, I just have, you know, PGVG, uh, bottles of nicotine for mixing juice, got some Vigilante stuff back here. What is this, Vapor City sauce, juice. That's one shelf. Another shelf is the exact same thing. I mean, this all goes way back there. Whole fuck ton of Amber juice. There's some Suck My Juice. I got some ISM stuff. I got some Sierra Vapor stuff left. Signed Sierra Vapor bottles. I got this thing. What is this? Bilberry from Vaporgate. Look at that bottle. I got that. Got tons of other stuff. Got a bunch of that high voltage stuff. I got some Jazzy Bopa. I got some Ragtime Vapor. Stuff out here is stuff that I want to taste first. So I got this Kilo Dewberry Cream out here. I went through and found it and set it right there so I know that 
one of the next atomizers I rebuild. This is the juice that I really want to try. I got some ragtime vapor stuff. They're going to be up at VaporCon West as well. Very excited to have them. Yeah, Poorhouse. They're going to be at uh, VaporCon West as well. Bet you didn't know that. No. Uh, Schwartz. Jeez. Uh, just a ton of stuff and then it's not over it's not over there there's more juice down here big bottles white label juice co liquid swords from off the record uh the cloud kicker serum stuff the beginning of the end pale whale what else is in here this stuff i don't even know i don't even know what that is this stuff death wish is awesome i got a bunch of grim cult stuff down here uh rainbow sherbert in the dark i got the caramel corpse Lavella, I just picked this stuff up from uh, at the SoCal Vape Expo, or no, not the SoCal Vape Expo, at the OC Vapors Club meet. Just juice, Coastal Fog, juice review, Coastal Fog, Space Poppy. That was my best uh, clear eyes impression. A uh, ton of stuff. Additionally, uh, this is some Brewwell stuff up here, and underneath this is a bunch of Ego Ones that all need to be given away. In fact, Joy Tech went crazy and sent six EVIC VTs. You see this? There's six, let's stack them up right here. This is six EVIC VTs. These are all gonna be getting given away. Getting given away. These are all gonna be given away. In fact, I need ideas for uh, for how and when and what to, uh, and when to give these away and how I'm gonna do it. Uh, they're all the different colors ones. Uh, this one's yellow, that one's yellow. Okay, that one's yellow too. Okay, that one's black, so there's different ones. But yeah, I got a bunch of EVIC VTs. It's just a matter of uh, keeping things organized and it's a matter of keeping, everything has a home. That's one thing I can't stress enough. Everything has a home. This juice might look like chaos, but it does have a home. Things are in certain places for a reason. These juices up front are ones I want to taste. Big bottles go down here. Smaller bottles go up here. Half-filled bottles go over here. Tried and true flavors go in a certain place. New flavors go in another place. That's just how it works. There's just, there's a place for everything. Down here on the side of my bookcase is where I'm starting my sticker collection. Grim Army, Anarchist, I got Brewwell. Local vape, so cheeksy, so I'm trying to fill this up, hopefully, with uh, with stickers. I'm have, I think I have a plumes sticker that I'm going to put there. And, of course, then I have my wall of uh, of artwork and nonsense, Guar, the Transformers, all this stuff. I got a, ch I got a signed record from uh, Chad Ginsberg from CKY. He says, Nick, thanks for the amazing Amber Juice. Best of luck, Chad from CKY 2013. Signed uh, record. Uh, the Hellview single from uh, CKY. Pinup Girl, because Pinup Girl, uh, Silver State Tattoo and Art Festival Girl, The Rat Pack, Batman, uh, of course, a lot of people have been asking if this is Hitler. Uh, it is not, that is John Cleese, famous British comedian. Uh, I have a signed picture uh, from him. This is a uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, uh, postcard that I got from uh, uh, as a gift from Cheeksy as well. That's Victoria, the girl uh, that I met at uh, at Vape Bash, me and her took a picture, and then of course this is Carly Johnson's uh, Grim Army uh, Grim Army picture. And I have a picture of me and my brother from Disneyland, and then I have a signed picture from uh, uh, you know Matt from uh, the Northwestern. From uh, you know he runs Big Sky Vapor up there in uh, in Washington. I got an old Glacier Show poster and this Grim Army. This is probably one of my favorite things I've I've ever owned. Uh, this was hand burned. Uh, graphic on there which is crazy if you look at all these little it's crazy so the second to the last stop on our tour is over here in the corner next to Stuart say hi Stuart say hi what a dick uh, this is where things go that are waiting to be tested so I have things over here like this this is the mech mod uh, from Sensi Sensi Kensi mech mod sitting there uh, I have this is that blue dolphin thing waiting over here to be tested. This is my Cherry Bomber clone, which may never get used. And then I have, uh, this is where my rebuildable atomizers sit that aren't currently getting used right now, but still need a review. Like the, uh, uh, what, which one is this? The Orion version two, Mutation X version four, the CKS, the Cloud Kicker Society atomizer. Additionally, there's tanks sitting over here that are still, that are currently not being actively used, but still need a review video done for them. Then there's this thing sitting here, that giant Aspire. 
Uh, some other miscellaneous mech mods and giant uh, batteries. These all sit in here and uh, are awaiting review. This is that Matrix battery I was talking about earlier. These are all stuff uh, waiting to get reviews. The Ego 1 Mega, some other copper mech mods. This one will probably be next week. That DNA 40 pipe. It's not actively getting used right now, but it's still waiting over here, waiting for a review, and I'm gonna use it more later on. Uh, and then I have my mess of chargers, which probably kind of looks like a big fire hazard, but it's all where my chargers sit. Uh, I have this IntelliCharger i4. Of course, I have my favorite Nightcore charger that I talked about last week, and then I have the X-Star charger uh, as well. So, you know, at any given time, what is that? Eight, I can charge, uh, what, 10 batteries? Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Yeah, 10 batteries. And that's where I charge stuff so moving past stewart past sean and past the millennium falcon this is where stuff sits that's getting actively actively used so i've got two evic vts in a can cool fire the power box limited that uh, seven volt mod um this you know the mad vapes thing the deviate uh the bmi over here is getting actively used all these mech mods even though they don't have atomizers these are all getting actively used this is from uh j wraps that's their millennium falcon uh mod holder and uh that's where i keep stuff that's getting actually used this is that build uh you know the mini deck two from mr shane where the all the canthal comes out the bottom here and i use it for building that's ribbon that's 26 gauge 22 gauge and 24 gauge i believe all the tools get to sit up here and this is where stuff like i said is being actively used if i'm dripping the juices go in here i could just as easily take this mod and i'm going to put it over here and then i'm going to take that mod's juice bottle and i'm going to put it over here so i know where things are things stay th things have a home um and then boring shit like a printer transformers my pc towers down there and then my uh that's my uh toolbox for uh for building so yeah really really fascinating things happening here in the uh in the office it's just fascinating isn't it but uh, yeah, that's around the office. Just keep things organized. Everything has a home. Everything has a place where it needs to go. Okay, so let's just focus on that, Mr. Vaping with Twisted 420 in your nightmare mess of a room. That was amazing. Um, so yeah, now I think this vlog's pretty much over. Let's get back to it. So yeah, that's, uh, that's around my office. That's everything you ever need to see. You can always see my charges over there. Stuart, who didn't say hi sticker collection kind of happening over there the mod shelf with all a whole mess of juices in it um stuff i have stuff everywhere but everything has a home and that's kind of the key to keeping things clean and every i mean literally every single day i'll do an inventory of everything that i'm using uh, i will line up along this little shelf right here everything that i'm using a mod an atomizer juice mod atomizer juice mod atomizer juice all lined up here so i have to take inventory and then i vape them all to make sure they're all working at 100 percent if something is wonky or weird or burnt or leaking it gets torn apart and rebuilt that all happens on thursday i save it all up thursday is oh my god rebuild everything day you have to have a system you know what i mean uh it's it's work it's a lot of work and you know there's there's this whole like stigma like uh oh well youtube reviewers you get all your shit for free anyway so you should be thankful it's like yeah i'm absolutely thankful i've got thanks to thanks to youtube i've got to vape some of the greatest and unfortunately some of the worst shit on earth additionally it's all work things come in they need to get cataloged they need to get inventory they need to have a home they need to get used rebuilt tested used rebuilt tested they need to stay in their home they need to get used i need to make sure that i use things uh for a certain amount of time before i feel comfortable speaking about them and so if there's something that i've been neglecting like maybe this snow wolf maybe i haven't been using this as much as i feel like i should have something else will go over here and say okay you pause for a second i'm going to use this snow wolf much more next time i go out to dinner i'm going to take the snow wolf next time i travel i'm going to take the snow wolf things have to get used cataloged inventoried cleaned rebuilt it's it's a big uh it's a big process and hopefully i mean that's something that we all do all of the uh all of the youtube -y people but i got this um I i'm gonna wrap this vlog up i feel like shit i've got some tea
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Still good. Still feel like shit. Hopefully tomorrow I feel better, and hopefully by Saturday at VCCPA I'll feel much, much, much better. But as it stands, oh, I don't feel super good right now. So we're going to wrap this vlog up. I apologize. It's short. I'm not going to have any viewer mail or music, but we did cover a, a fuck ton of subjects. And then I took you on a little tour of the room, which uh, may or may not be interesting to people. As always, I have links in the description to where you can uh, look more into basically everything that I talked about in this here vlog just remember that there's not gonna be any review videos next week no muck mod monday no topper tuesday no wildcard wednesday but there will be a vlog on thursday and i'll be talking about my experience at the vccpa event i'm gonna bring my gopro with me and hopefully we can get some footage uh tune in monday uh plumes of hazard on the ohmpage.com uh myself and mr matt cully from suck my mod will be on the show we're gonna be uh in sean's house uh, while they're broadcasting and so it's going to be great uh, we're going to get to give Sean a bunch of shit and it should be a really really fun time uh, check it out on the ohmpage.com I'll post a link in the description to where you can check it out if you're so interested but that's what I got as always thank you so much everybody for sticking in there with me even when I'm sick even when I'm tired even when I have to pee like I do right now your support just means the fucking world to me I, I couldn't do it without you I'm getting text messages that's a Jawa sound um I'll see you all next week. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, let's keep on vaping. All right, thanks everyone for watching. And if you like this vlog, feel free to go back and check out my weekly review series. I'll have them linked below. Mech Mod Monday, Topper Tuesday, and Wild Card Wednesday. And lastly, comments, feedback, likes, and subscriptions are always appreciated. Thanks so much, everyone. Things are happening. Things are happening. Not bad. Not bad at all.